Hello, everyone. Oh, there it goes. Good morning. Uh, thank you all for, for joining. I know how hard it is to not play pinball, so I appreciate you coming and not playing pinball with me at 10.30 on a Saturday. Uh, so this seminar is, is just a little bit about uh, Pinball Chicago, which is the team-based league uh, in Chicago, and a little bit about the format of how we run our games, we run the league, uh, just in case you're curious. So a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is William Russo. I am the uh, proud commissioner of Pinball Chicago. I took over the role uh, in August of 2017, so just a little bit over a year ago, uh, from Ben Vigent. Uh, if anybody is, is familiar with him, he's a very nice guy who was nice enough to put in the time and effort uh, to share his love with pinball and really start the league in Chicago. Uh, my day job, uh, which kind of goes along with this, is I work for a company called Stats LLC uh, as the global operations manager. And what I do is I work for a company that collects sports statistics uh, for basically every sport around the world. Um, I focus on soccer. We collect over 500 leagues around the world, about 60,000 games a year, uh, a data point every time a ball touches a foot. Um, so for EPL and Bundesliga, every time a ball touches a foot, I know exactly who it was, where it was in the field, which foot it was, if it was a pass, cross, thing like that. So uh, I have a, a background in sports, a, a passion for, for games in general, and um, enjoy keeping stats and uh, standings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I have been totally okay at pinball since 2015. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I think, especially for everybody who's here, I'm pretty new to pinball uh, still, uh, but I enjoy getting better at it every day. Uh, I've had very good days and very bad days, uh, and I think we can all probably say that about pinball, but I've it's really become uh, a strong love of mine, um, and I'm thankful for the friends that I have who've kind of introduced me to it and uh, continue to help me get better. Uh, so a little bit of background about the league. Uh, began in March of 2014. We are currently celebrating our 10th season. I feel like we should have some sort of commemorative pin for that. Uh, we have sister leagues in New York, Portland, and in the Twin Cities. A fine gentleman who I've never met, but I've talked to multiple times online. His name is Christopher Medina. He is the founder of uh, kind of the team-based pinball leagues that we uh, are a sister league of. Uh, he basically runs kind of the, owns the website and also owns a arcade bar in New York called Solid State, which I have yet to visit, but I, it's on my list. So a little bit about more about the league. Uh, we currently are at 10 teams, each with uh, about 10 players each, so we're about 100 players right now. Uh, each team has its own home bar where they'll play their, their home games and they will travel for the road game. So go to uh, each bar separately uh, to, to take on the road teams. Uh, it, the very exciting part is it is free to play uh, for the players, aside from the part of actually paying for the pinball and the beer that you drink. Um, bars contribute $100 a season, which goes towards league costs. The league costs are fun things like pizza and trophies. Uh, we have two uh, separate seasons, both in the fall and spring. Uh, each, each season right now is 10 weeks uh, plus playoffs. League night for us is Monday at 8 p.m., um, which is I, I think worked really well from the standpoint of there's not much to do on Monday anyway, so why not go play pinball and have a beer? Uh, we also have opening and closing season parties, which are a way for me to distribute uh, informational folders and trophies at the end of the year, but also a, a chance for us to kind of get together all as a league all at one time uh, and have a little tournament and just, again, play more pinball, which is never a bad thing. Anyone over the age of 21 can play in the league. Uh, 21 basically because all of our home and away locations are actual bars, and so we don't want to get in trouble with that. Uh, we, one of the things I'm really proud of is we are, out of the 100 players that we have, about 30 of them are women, uh, and it's, it's really, I'm really proud that we have 30% of women and even more and more are joining as we go. 
a uh, little bit more about the teams and bars. Uh, so each team roster needs at least one captain and five starters, so six people. That way we know you're actually going to have people who show up every Monday. Uh, if you want, you can have an additional four reserve players. The difference between a starter and a reserve in our league is starters, if they're on your roster as a starter, they have to play if they show up. A reserve player can just hang out and have fun if they so choose. Uh, to play a, a game, you have to have at least four people show up on Monday. Um, and then a little addendum here is, okay, f you can have three people show up, but you actually are at a penalty. You lose, you lose a point per round. What I ask from the bar is that you ha at least have one functional machine, uh, but the more the better for both fun and time of play reasons. So when I started um, as commissioner, we had a few bars with only one machine, uh, and it would take a good chunk to play. There'd be rounds that would start at 8 o'clock, uh, or games that start at 8 o'clock, and probably not it'll be over to like 11.30 or midnight. Um, it, it takes a long time. Uh, I'm really happy to announce that all of our bars right now all have two, at least two machines, which speeds up the night considerably and is more fun um, for a number of reasons. Uh, I'm not opposed to one machine bars, but we got to make kind of the case. Uh, I try my best to communicate with the captains of each team um, if the machines are going not working uh, to, to try and talk to the bar owners to get those fixed, to get the techs in. The other thing I really enjoy about the league is home field advantage. Uh, I think it's really cool that you can be good at the machines at your place, and then you have to go somewhere else and play new machines that you wouldn't normally play that maybe the other team is really good at as well. I think I, I enjoy that as part of the league, um, is to, to really kind of have a home field advantage. Here are the teams that we currently have. Uh, the reason I show you is just so you guys can appreciate the creativity of the pinball puns that we have. Um, so I am currently a member of the Extra Ballsy team. Um, but Tilt Chamberlain, Tilt Use Charge, Scoop Shoot and Boogie. Uh, and they're all, everybody who is who is in the league is really just great people who loves pinball um, and could not be like more supportive of, of the league and I'm, I'm really grateful. Uh, even more grateful to the bars that let us play there and give us money for the league. Uh, here's our map right now. So you can see it's mostly kind of in the northern neighborhoods, but we do have some in the loop in, the lo in West Town. Um, Emporium, Lemmings, Green Eye, Logan Arcade, more Emporiums, uh, Demon Tap, Headquarters, Uptown Arcade, Replay, Lincoln Park. Um, yeah, we, uh, we obviously could not do the league without them, uh, and we're incredibly grateful for their support. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's a little bit about the the league itself. Now I'm going to get into the format of, of kind of how we score each round. Um, so the first thing that we have is, is the website, which I will bring up here. Here's our website. There's Chuck, if you know Chuck. So the website we have uh, going, and this just a, a very easy way to take a look at the schedule for the league. Uh, so here's our, our, our fall schedule with the results and the days and the locations. So if, for example, this week, uh, my team is going on the road to Uptown Arcade. So it's a very easy way for people to know where they're supposed to be on Monday. And we also have a standings page, like so. So you can see kind of where everybody sits right now. Uh, so the first tiebreaker is obviously wins and losses, and I'll get into the points in a second here. Oh, well, I I enjoyed it. Um, it's fine. We'll come back to that later. Uh, so <laughs> we have 16 available points uh, each match. If anybody is into like team tennis, it has a very similar feel. We have eight points in doubles round. Uh, the doubles rounds are four separate games, uh, two points each. Uh, the next one is the singles round, where we have eight games, and each one is worth one point. First team to nine points wins the match. Uh, if it's tied at 8-8, eight, eight, we have a tiebreaker where the home team gets to decide between a split flipper or a uh, three-person game where each person has one ball. Uh, those are exciting. Um, and then teams alternate between who declares the machine and who plays first. So to help you with the visual, here's our score sheet. And can you see my mouse? Yes, you can. 
Okay, so it would basically start with the away team uh, choosing the machines they want to play and picking the two players that they want to play in that game. And then we will slide the sheet over to the home team and they will decide who best would have a chance to, to do well on that machine or against those opponents. And so we will have two doubles rounds right here and then we'll have a singles round right here. So here's an example where the away team would fill out uh, who is playing in the doubles and pick the machines. And then we'll slide the sheet over and the other team will then decide who is going to play against them. So the way the doubles works is it's basically we just do cumulative score of, of your, your teammates versus the other two teammates. So players one and players one and three versus players two and four. So we alternate as you go. You add up your scores with your teammates and you, depending on who wins the, the game, you get two points like so. Here's a beautiful picture of what a full uh, sheet looks like. I ask all the captains to send, us, send me um, the results um, just with a photo on their phone. Uh, but here's a close game that my team played last week where we were fortunate enough to win nine to seven. But you can see all of the, the games that were selected uh, and then the players who played. So we also have statistics, which I don't know is going to work, because the other one didn't work before, but we'll give it a shot. I've decided if you want to see the statistics, you can come up to me after the uh, presentation. That way we don't just have me looking at a computer for five minutes. Okay, uh, but the fun thing about the stats thing is when someone sends me the sheet, uh, I will actually put it into a database and players can check out uh, their win-loss records um, historically or for that season um, to see how they're doing. Uh, they can also see like, like who's doing the best in the league. Uh, you can. One of the things that I'm like most excited about and most proud of is when we database the machines, you can actually prepare to play an opponent depending on how what machines they choose the most. So if you know, oh, we're going to go to Uptown Arcade and they always pick um, Ghostbusters, if you want, you can show up earlier that week and practice Ghostbusters because you know they're going to pick it. Um, so I, I, that's probably one of my more favorite things that, that the databasing um, of the results gives us. So. Uh, the league is self-officiating. We have a giant uh, rule sheet on the website, and I also give it to all the teams when the league starts. Um, but the rules are very similar to IFPA uh, for individual gameplay, if not even a little bit more specific. I try my best to, in the rules, to basically list for all possible things that could happen with the pinball machine, which, as we know, is impossible because pinball machines are crazy. Um, but the the captains do a really good job of officiating themselves and, and knowing the rules. and. Um, in the three years, or in the year I've been doing it, the three seasons I've been doing it, we've had very few issues where like um, rules were not available to, to kind of read and go along. So one of the things that I also like to to talk about is that coaching is allowed and encouraged in our league. Um, it's it's a team it's a team league. So if you want, you can tell your teammate to hit a certain shot or tell them if a ball save is gone or if the right ramp is going to give them jackpot, like that's encouraged. Um, the more energy, the more coaching, the better. Uh, it, it's, it's a fun part of the, the league. So little joys and difficulties. Uh, just a little bit about kind of my experience as being a commissioner. Uh, the bars really enjoy it both financially and, and the idea of having a team. So on Monday nights, especially uh, in the winter, it might be a little slow for them, but we, we bring in um, a lot more drinkers, I suppose. <laughs> uh, and it's 
it, it's good from a, especially not even on league nights, but people will go to their home bar and practice, or people will go to a different bar and practice before their actual game night. Um, one of the things that makes me happy is seeing pictures of teams playing outside of just on league nights. Um, it's 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 good to see people develop friendships even on your team or outside of the team. And it's just another reason to play pinball, which we don't need. Um, if anybody's here, we all love it. But uh, just another reason to play pinball is great. Some of the difficulties, just as as kind of the league and the commissioner is, uh, the line between competition and fun. Uh, it's it's a we want everyone to try, but we also want everyone to be a good sport. Uh, the stress of letting your team down. Um, I know, at least for for me, if, if I go and play a tournament and I do poorly, then that's kind of on me. But if I were to lose uh, and my team would lose because of it, I know that's, that's kind of an added stressor. Um, so that's always one of the things that I, I try and really try and push both for, for my team but the league is that this really is supposed to be fun. Machine quality. Obviously, pinball machines um, at arcades get played a lot, uh, and so occasionally machines will malfunction, and that's always kind of a troublesome thing. Uh, collecting money from bars, always an adventure. Uh, most are pretty good, some you gotta chase. Personalities, some people have opinions, which is always a thing. Uh, and then pin pinball being pinball, pinball is a random sport, which is why we love it, uh, but it, it does cause some issues. Uh, the last thing I would I'm gonna add is the the wheel that at least our team started using to to kind of reduce the pressure of picking who is playing and who is uh, and what machine. So we just added this little wheel thing. Um, it's not mandatory at all for the league, but it's something that we do and um, we like a lot. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll just we'll spin the wheel to decide who's gonna play in that game. So in the first game, it's going to be Nate Stevie. Uh, which is exciting. I'm sure Stevie's pumped about playing. And then she, we're going to pick her teammate. This is like for a doubles round. And it's Ann, and it's me. Uh, so we will play together on the team. And then what we'll do is we'll flip it over uh, to, to pick the arcade that we're at, which we have all of the machines at the arcade. And this will be the machine that we play. So I, it does, I think, put us at a little bit of a competitive disadvantage. But I would say from a uh, team camaraderie and less stress it is it's been uh, it's been really great uh, to, to do this so we're playing Ghostbusters um, so yeah this is just kind of something that we do on the top of it it also is good if you ever want to like practice for a tournament you don't know what machines you're gonna be cho chosen to play so the last thing I have is just trophies and questions um, I'm not giving away the trophies I'm just showing them to you does anybody have any Questions about the league or the format? Go ahead. No, we, we purchased the wheel. Uh, I will ask the man in the front row. Decide now is the app. So uh, for our opening closing parties, we, we do a, a tournament, and what I the winner, we have a nice little like kind of engraved uh, pint class. And then for the actual end of season, uh, whoever wins the championship, we give out gold and silver medals to every player who, who made the, the finals. Um, we used to have a trophy. It got stolen. Um, but I like, the <laughs> I like the medal idea, because that way everybody gets something. You don't have to like share one trophy. Um, so we get them engraved on the back with Pinball Chicago and the year. And so it's it's good. If you guys have any other questions, yep. So it's been a phenomenon discussion recently about <coughs> growing the base. Um, is there any aspect you can point to that uh, a person who has a good friend who's not into pinball could kind of pull him into league play? Is that yeah, I mean, I... I, I <laughs> I would say we have we have definitely skill sets um, from both very good to beginners in our league, and I, I think part of part of what makes our league special is that we encourage everyone to play no matter what skill set it is. And there's people who started a year ago who have, who are so much better now because they they enjoy going out and playing pinball with others um, and and learning. And people who have played can show them like kind of basics and uh, simple rule sets. 
And I think really to get people like into it, all you have to do is just show them they can, they can get better at it and that it's not just completely random. That, for me, that was that was like the major driver was just to, to understand that that you can you can get better and pr pretty quickly if you just know some simple fundamentals. Um, but yeah, absolutely. The the part about being um, with a group of friends playing pinball instead of just like going out and being competitive about it is what is what I try and sell this league about. So everybody is welcome. Uh, one of the things that I'm sad about but I don't know, really know what to do about it at the moment, um, maybe in the future, is that because it's 21 and over, because we're all in bars, it does kind of like limit getting kids into it. Um, so I'm, I'm, I haven't put any effort into it, but something that's kind of on the back of my brain is to, to see if we can do something from like a, yeah, to, to get kids involved. You're brainstorming here about I, that. Yeah. Yeah, a and whatever. absolutely, and I, I am a perfect example of that. I didn't play pinball at all until three years ago, um, and now I'm sitting at doing the <laughs> Pinball Chicago Commissioner thing. So, um, yeah, there's there's a, a lot of players who've just kind of started in our league, um, and they've gotten so much better. It's a mixture of it's a mixture of both. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a mixture of both. And are you are you in direct contact with any of the operators? <laughs> I am. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. Not all of them. Some I go through the bar, but some I have a direct contact with the, the operators. And and uh, usually the operators are the the easiest ones to get a hold of. Um, well, certainly when you think about it, the operator only makes money on the coin drop in the game. They have much more of a vested interest than the bar where they're selling beer yeah. and food and we can get to your election. Yeah, something I didn't really talk about, but when we when you go before every match starts, each team is usually there probably about a half hour or an hour before like kind of warming up and playing and getting used to the machines. Um, but before every match starts, the two captains get together and say like, hey, there's a switch on Star Wars that's not working. That one's out tonight. Um, which is why the more machines, the better, just in case the, uh, one machine isn't working that day. Uh, but a lot of the bars have been really good. They know when league night is, and they will either get the tech in um, like Monday before the league starts or at least before the weekend. So we're really appreciative to them. I mean, I think most of it is, is just communication. It's just getting to them before, like, it's just getting to them ahead of time. So you don't, if the league starts at Monday at 8 o'clock, you don't text them at Monday at 6 o'clock saying, like, hey, this machine's broken. Um, usually what will happen is I'll have, I'll get an update from a captain uh, <coughs> on a Monday night saying, like, hey, this machine is down. And then I will contact the operator on Tuesday morning and saying, like, hey, the next home game at this venue is in two weeks. Can you please make sure, like, in two weeks this is fixed? And usually they're really good about it. Um, the only time I've ever had a big issue with this is when the operator and the pinball bar owner were just, like, kind of at, at, like, at odds on, like, when they could, when the bar was open for them to fix it. Um, but that, fortunately, has passed. Uh, but I, I've, I've found no reluctance to operators fixing machines as long as you just communicate ahead of time and, and be nice to them. Any other questions? Oh, go ahead. So they're compensated by us putting money in their machines. Yeah. Well, it uh, it depends on the uh, it depends on the, the location. So some locations are coin operated, um, and we will happily pay 
two dollars for three plays, right? Uh, and then some, some are just on free play, so you just buy a drink and go play pinball. Calls for questions. All right, we're ending right on time. Cool. Thanks, very Thanks much. everybody. Here he is, seconds before he's due to go on. <laughs> All right. Coming up later. Starting at 3 p.m., uh, Scott Denisi talking about his uh, fan favorite game, Total Nuclear Annihilation, and then begins the succession of Stern Pinball presentations, new designer Keith Elwin, old designer Steve Ritchie, ultimate designer and head of chief creative officer, I guess they call him now, George Gomez, and the Stern Orama. Three beers, by the way, three beers. Of the four. Three beers.
notified that you're on camera. Yeah, and yeah, take your take your shirt, the official expo shirt, and pull it up over your head. Yeah, are we all making note of how to configure the video stream?
to be uh, we're going to be taking a lot of questions, obviously. But um, the internet's also going to be asking questions. If there's like a, a lull, then we'll bother these nerds in chat. Um, but you will be on camera, so feel free to do all the gang signs and stuff like that that you want to do. Uh, we will be also if you bought a raffle ticket for the Project Pinball raffle to win the World Poker Tour. We're going to be pulling the winner of that. And i got to figure out how I'm going to give you guys a number, but we are going to be giving away an entire pinball streaming rig, which is that pile of boxes over there. I'll explain what's in there, and uh, whoever wins it, I will also help you, you know, figure out how to set it all up. I have a video coming out about how to properly set one up. Yo, what's up, my man? Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, com it comes with a, you know, customer support. So, there you go. Places, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> 